So, a couple of weeks ago, there was an interview on The Hollywood Reporter with the producers of the new hit historical TV series, Shogun, where they gave us some great insights into the making of the show and some of the challenges and hurdles they had to face during the production of this series. In this video, I'll give you my opinion on some of the most interesting details that got revealed in this interview, which you may not be aware of, but these are all interesting facts nonetheless. But before we begin, don't forget if you love anything to do with historical movies and historical TV shows, then subscribe to my channel, History Spark. So the first thing that stuck out to me about Shogun was just how long it took to create this show. The inception of this project in its current form started in 2018, meaning it took 5 years from taking this idea from paper to production, which I think really highlights just how dedicated the entire team was on doing as much research and groundwork possible before getting the show even into pre-production. But you'll also be surprised to know that many studios were not interested in recreating the Shogun book and it actually took 5 years before FX picked up the show for production. Meaning in total this show took over 10 years to make it to our TV screen. 5 years looking to get picked up by a studio and another 5 years on top for production and the series to be completed which is absolutely crazy for a 10 episode miniseries if you think about it. But this long production time for Shogun was worth it as the first two episodes currently sit at having over 9 million views combined from both the Hulu and Disney Plus platform, which is one of the highest figures on the streaming platforms for a franchise not related to an already established entity like Marvel or Star Wars. So a show that was definitely worth the wait in my humble opinion and I think one that Disney and Hulu are both going to be very proud of by the end of its run. So another interesting fact that stuck out to me from this interview and something that I was not aware of is the fact that Shogun is actually produced and directed by a husband and wife duo named Justin Marks and Rachel Kondo. And during this 5 year period they also had 2 children meaning they managed to deal with the struggles of being new parents and creating such a huge epic historical show simultaneously. And as a parent of two children under five, I can truly appreciate just how difficult this undertaking must have been for the couple. As parenting is no easy task, but creating a historical TV show of this caliber on top just seems unimaginable to me. Kudos to the producers of this show, they did a magnificent job. As they did not let something as trivial as two new babies distract them from their primary vision, which they highlighted as being ensuring right from the start of shooting that they made sure that the Japanese language, perspective and history would be at the forefront and center throughout the entire series. And they achieved this goal by getting veteran Japanese actor Hiroyuki Sanada not only as a lead for Shogun but also as a producer and advisor for the show, letting him be in charge of making sure that Japanese culture and tradition was displayed appropriately and in a way that would appeal to the Japanese market as well. And based on the reviews from Japanese media and audiences so far, Hiroyuki Sanada performed his role as producer and advisor perfectly as Shogun has been very well received in Japan as Japanese viewers have really appreciated how much time and effort a Hollywood TV series has taken to get even the little nuances of Japanese culture, costume and tradition correct. And I think the authenticity of Shogun is something that has really endeared it to many viewers all across the world. I believe that's the reason they brought me on board along with groups of Japanese advisors. And we did everything within our power to ensure this show is authentic. But the most surprising and interesting thing that I learned from this interview about the making of Shogun was just how complex and convoluted the scripting and dialogue process for this show really was. Since majority of the show is in Japanese but being written by Americans, some of which are Asian Americans themselves, but this still means that their primary influence is from an American or a Western perspective. So this would mean the first draft of the script would be written by a team of writers in English, then sent to Tokyo to be translated from English to Japanese, then that draft would be sent to a Japanese playwright who specializes in Japanese Edo period pieces and she would modify the script even further. But then her vision of the script would be sent to the Japanese producers including Hiroyuki Sanada who would re-review the script and make even more changes to it. And then the script would be passed on to the actors and then the actors would add their own twist or take to the dialogue 
And then finally, this completed script will be brought back to the American writers to create the subtitles for the new and improved revised script that probably looks nothing like the script that they had initially sent out. Because we went through this telephone game and asked the, our Japanese assistant editors to actually retranslate from the Japanese, give us what they actually said. Well, we could take that and we say, well, that's a much better line. So let's use that. Yeah. I am tired just talking about the process. I can't imagine how complicated it would be to see the script writing process in real life. And it definitely makes me appreciate the hard work of the script writing and translation team a lot more now than when I initially did when I first started watching Shogun. Also, I'm sure many people might know this already, but it is still an interesting fact nonetheless. And that is the fact that this is actually the second remake of the Shogun book by James Clavell with the first Shogun getting released in 1980 and was a very well received TV show during that time. This is Shogun, the staggering saga of feudal Japan. But it didn't prioritize accurately representing Japanese culture or society anywhere as much as our current remake of Shogun does. He is checking every single detail from props and costume to Japanese dialogue, making sure every single detail is, is authentic. And this could be due in large part to them not having someone with the experience of Hiroyuki Sonada on their production team. Hiroyuki has been involved in Japanese cinema for decades now and was able to pinpoint exactly which inaccuracies could be ignored and which needed to be fixed, such as making sure every character's obai is correctly tied and making sure that the kimono's left lapel is always over the right and never vice versa. Uh, one of the hardest part, especially for the young actors, how to wear a kimono, how to walk, how to sit. Such small things I'm sure most viewers would not have even noticed being taken so seriously just highlights just how much of a passion project this show was for the entire team and individuals involved. And now the last and most disappointing fact shared was the confirmation that there will be no season 2 of Shogun, as the producers have said that the show ends exactly how the book does and there is no need or want from them to revisit what they already consider to be the perfect ending to the show. So that is a bit disheartening to hear, but also probably a good thing in many ways, as I hate nothing more than series that drag out longer than necessary and I'm glad that Shogun will end right when it is supposed to. When we started on this project, there was the book Shogun by James Clavell, and there was uh, the conversation that Hiro Sonata uh, was interested in playing Tornaga, uh, and that I felt like is all we needed for a show. But this is all the interesting information that stuck out to me from this article, and let me know in the comments down below what fact you found to be the most fascinating or interesting and remember to stay up to date with everything to do with historical movies and historical TV shows. Then make sure to subscribe to my channel, History Spark. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.